HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Some cars are comfy on the inside, but don't have power on the outside. And some cars have the horsepower, but none of the comfort. I used to think there weren't any cars that were the total package, but that all changed when I got my Honda SUV. It's rugged and sophisticated, and right now, Honda has deals on the entire Honda SUV lineup. CRV, HRV, Pilot, Passport, you name it. So if you're looking for a car that's the total package, the only place you'll find it is at your local Honda dealer. Hurry before they're all gone. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. Head over to audibletrial.com slash business growth. Sign up for a free trial of audible.com and go exploring. Check out the audio books, but also check out the other um, audio content that is there for your enjoyment. I think you're going to like it. The Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to enjoy inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to. This is really because of the guests. Uh, These are people who have expertise in particular areas of business, and they join me for a conversation where they share that expertise with all of you. Today is no exception. My guest today is Aaron Fultz. Too many companies are losing business because their marketing message is confusing their customers and often their own team. Aaron is a marketing consultant who helps service-based businesses develop a clear marketing message and sales funnel so they connect with the right customer and increase sales. She's run a small business for 12 years and is a story brand certified guide and business made simple coach. And I just love that she says, so companies can connect with the right customer. It's one of my favorite things. Welcome to the podcast, Erin. Thank you for having me, Diane. I'm excited to be here. I am thrilled to have you here. I, you know, we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, the importance of and how you incorporate story and and the elements of story in your branding and marketing, um, which I think is a huge subject. So, um, I, you know, I, you, when I was reading your bio, I mentioned that so many businesses are confusing their customers and their team with their marketing message. And I'm curious, 
So if someone's listening, what are the signs that, you know, a brand message is confusing customers? Yeah, great question. So there, there are several signs. So externally, if you, um, find that your customers, like if, if somebody ever asks you, um, tell me, what do you do? And after you explain it, they have kind of a glazed over look or a look of confusion. <laughs> you are probably confusing them. Um, or if you have any kind of service, uh, is often it, but it could be product based too, um, that you, your, your explanation of what you offer ends in like, you just have to experience it to get it. Um, your <laughs> your message is unclear. <laughs> and, you know, internally you can uh, confuse your own team if everybody is answering the what you offer or what do you do question in a different way. If there's not a consistent message across the board internally of how everybody on your team is, is talking amongst yourselves as well as to your customers, if it's not uh, consistent in how you're talking about what you offer, uh, there, there is some dissonance there. There is some sort of confusion happening uh, and it doesn't have to be, um, but, but those are some of the signs for sure. Okay. That, that's great. And, and as you were talking about, I could actually um, feel like what that would feel like, that, that mm. sort of confusion and uncertainty. And, and boy, I, I think it, it not only makes it hard for prospective customers to land, but I think it makes it hard for your team to be sure that they are actually delivering whatever it is that, you know, they're supposed to be delivering. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're, there's no, um, no clarity around, you know, what's our target? How are we talking about what we offer in a way that we one know is really clear to our ideal customer? We're making it clear how we make their life better, but even what we actually offer. It, what is, what's fascinating, Diane, is I can't tell you how many websites I've gone to and you land on a website and I have no idea what the company sells. Wow. And you go like, internally, it's clear to them. They know the ins and outs of their business. They know what they're offering because they're delivering it every day. But somehow uh, all the decisions that got made behind closed doors in the room of the business never made it out in a really clear and uh, obvious way in their external messaging and marketing. And so people land on websites and go, Hmm, this looks interesting, but I couldn't tell you what they actually offer or how it makes my life better. It really is, is shocking to me, to me sometimes how many times I see that. So is, is part of the problem that they're too close to it, that they know what they do so, you know, so deeply that they have a hard time articulating it or they don't realize that other people don't know what they're doing and. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's it. it that's it absolutely, is when you know the ins and outs of what you offer. Um, and, you know, like I said, because you're delivering it every day, you know, you forget that um, every new website visitor, every new potential lead or customer that interacts with any of your marketing material or anything related to your business, you know, if it's the first time they're interacting or, or being exposed to what you, what you do or what you offer, um, they don't have the backstory, right? Um, they don't have the context. And so, um, you know, we can have these sort of clever marketing messages or, or, or clever social posts or, you know, clever, uh, uh, emails and, and so forth or ads even. And, um, but they're not clear. They're, they're, uh, lacking a clarity on like, this is what I offer. This is how it's going to make my customer's life better. And you're missing out, you know, if, yeah. if you, if you don't take a step back and go, um, is there a, qu a question to always ask anytime you're creating any marketing material is, is there possibility for confusion in any of this? Where is, where is, could someone possibly like read, see, look at this and be confused about what we're trying to communicate? Mm -hmm. And if you, if you see an area where you go, huh, this, this particular piece that could potentially be confusing to somebody who doesn't know what I know, who doesn't know what we know, the folks sitting around the table, making those decisions, um, then you need to rework and, and rethink uh, how you're talking about what you're, what you're offering. It sounds like there might actually be value in finding someone who does not know about your business and having them read it. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, and totally. A absolutely. And even there, there's a great, um, say for your website, for example, um, you know, 
hopefully everybody listening to this has a website and in the world that we live in, right? It's a, it's a must for doing business in our, in our world. Um, but if you were to take your website, go to Starbucks or somewhere and uh, open it up on a laptop and just ask a random stranger, say, Hey, could you look at just the top part, the header before you scroll on your website. Could you look at my, my website for like 10 seconds, close the laptop and ask him, Hey, can you tell me what I offer or what I do and, and how to get it? If they can't answer that after about a 10 second look at your site, then you've got a, you've got a clarity problem in your messaging. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about, um, brand story because it, you know, it's sort of the buzz these days yeah. that, you know, story is a big deal. And um, I think sometimes what happens with especially small business owners is they say to themselves, okay, seriously, I, you know, I don't know if I should even invest the time and energy because this could be a fad. This could be just the latest and greatest thing, but it's not really going to stick. Sure. What's your sense of that when it comes to brand story? Yeah. So story. Um, well, first there's, there's sometimes misconceptions about what is meant by brand story. So ah. brand story is, it, it does not mean that you're telling your story. It doesn't mean you're telling the, the, the history of your company story. Um, sure, there can be a place for that, but it is not what you lead with. And um, it's so it's not about telling your story. It's actually about inviting your customer into a story. So when they um, interact with your any of your marketing material, um, they see their story uh, in in what you're saying in the words that you're using. And so story has actually been used for centuries to compel the human brain. Like it's how we are wired, right? Like you think about how we can go, you know, back when we were going to movie theaters pre COVID, um, <laughs> you know, we could, we could go and you could sit in a, in a theater for two hours and watch a movie and never daydream because your, your brain is just like locked in on a story. Um, so we are wired for story. And so when employed well, in the context of a marketing message, where you are inviting your customer, considering your customer as the hero of your uh, brand story of your of your marketing messaging and and um, reflecting that in your in your brand message, it it will hook them. It will draw them in because they see that like oh you see what it is that I want as a customer. You understand the problem I'm up against to get that thing that that I want, and you're here to guide me as you as a company and as a brand are positioning as the guide to, to your customer, who's the hero, um, to help them get, get whatever the thing is that they want as it relates to, uh, working with you or in, or doing business with you. Um, you are, you're hooking them. You're, you're pulling them in They're They're seeing the value in what you offer in a new way. Um, I mean, as an example, if this is helpful, Diane, sure. um, you know, you think of even brands or, or, or businesses that are very obvious what they offer. Like some of the, some of the clients that I work with sometimes are like home service businesses. It's really clear if you cut lawns and you are like lawn and landscaping, pretty obvious, right? Like it's yeah. pretty hard to, to mess that up where people go, I have no idea what you do. Like, it's pretty straightforward. If you, if you cut lawns and um, keep people's yards looking great. However, consider if you were, um, you know, you're looking and going, I, I need, you know, to solve for, I don't have time to, to uh, take care of my yard this weekend, whatever it is. And you're looking online for somebody, you have the company that just says, hey, we cut yards. It's clear. Yes. Um, but if you have a company who says, hey, like have the best yard on the block without all the work, um, you are tapping into a deeper story. Like you are tapping into a deeper desire for your, of your customer. If you are positioning and inviting them into this story where you're saying, hey, like, hey, you can have a, you can have a great yard, but I understand your problem. Like you don't have time. And so you're, you're talking about the thing that they, the deeper want that they have, which is related to your product or service. Um, but it, it's not just the dry. This is, this is what I offer. Uh, it is inviting them into like, Hey, I get the deeper wants and needs and desires you have, and I can help you get that. Those are the brands that are going to that are going to really connect with, with customers in a deeper way. Um, and we'll really see a long-term, 
long-term success as it relates to their marketing. Yeah, boy. I mean, I can really see that because when you can see yourself in the story, it is so much more relatable and it, and then it's that like, aha, okay, these are the people who get me. These yeah. are the people who are going to be able to help me in a sea of companies that are all doing the same thing. Totally. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then I have some more questions for you. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have thousands of titles to choose from, as well as podcasts, Audible originals, guided meditations, and more. One of my favorite audiobooks is Everyone Deserves a Great Manager by Scott Miller. For me, I love being able to listen to it anywhere and across my devices without losing my place. And I think you will too. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth to explore the variety of audiobooks and programs for yourself. Okay. So how would you recommend someone get started developing that brand message? Yeah. So there, there's a ton of resources available. Um, there is a great uh, framework developed by a guy named Donald Miller called the Story Brand Framework. Um, and some of your listeners may be familiar. There's a book called Building a Story Brand. There's an online course that you can take. Um, but it is what I have found to be the simplest framework to use um, to, to figure out how to incorporate stories story, um, like the elements of narrative story into your marketing message. And really all it is, is about seven questions that you need to be able to answer as a brand to use in your marketing. And it really, um, it, when you can answer those seven questions and when you can incorporate them into your marketing message, um, you will be inviting your customers into a story, something that they will engage with. And so that as just a really tactical tool is, is a great way to do that. Um, but even to go beyond that specific tool, you can certainly just ask yourself the question, like, you know, what is it that my customers actually want as it relates to my product or service? What's the problem that that's keeping them from getting that thing? If you can talk about their problem with regularity of what's the problem they're up against, um, customers always want, you know, they resonate with when they, when they see a, a brand or a company that understands that they have a problem in the way of getting what they want and they can help them solve that problem. Uh, having that showing up in your messaging will help, help invite them into, into a story and help them see that you understand that. Um, other elements to be sure that you're adding into your messaging are things like, what's the, what's the plan they need to go through to start working with you? Um, just making it really, really clear how to do business with you. That's a, a mistake I see with regularity, which is, you know, step one, step two, step three, how, how do you, they need to move forward to do business with you kind of lift the fog of, um, of uncertainty. Um, so they see a path forward and a see, see the success, even uh, painting a picture of success that um, they will experience if they choose to do business with you. All of those elements are part of, you know, some of the elements of story. It's not all of them, but it's some of them that you can incorporate into your, into your messaging to begin um, making it more story-based and customer-focused. So I I have a question for you about the, you know, understanding the, the problem that the customer is having. Sure. Sometimes um, the actual problem is a little deeper down. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, so, so I guess my question is like, which are we trying to hit? Are, are we trying to hit what, initially the customer thinks is the problem or the deeper, what the root of the problem is? Yeah, great question. Uh, and the answer is both. <laughs> you uh -huh. actually want to talk about what externally, what's the problem that's, that's they're up against? Like, um, so going back to the like lawn care example, like you just don't have time, you know, that could be it. Like, uh, or you don't have, um, you don't have time, you don't have, 
the ability, you don't have the equipment, whatever it is. Like externally, that's the problem. Internally, though, that ex that external problem is making them feel something. Um, so it could be like yard shame. You know, that sounds silly, but like, hey, it makes you feel like you're that neighbor who just is not keeping their yard together because, um, you know, because you don't have the time to do it. Uh, as an example, just sort of off the cuff, but you want to, you want to tap into the both. There's the external thing that's actually getting in the way. And that, that problem is making your customer feel something. So if you can articulate in your marketing message, that internal thing that they're feeling as it relates to uh, the thing that's keeping them from getting what they want, as it relates to your product or service, uh, they will feel like you're reading their mail. Um, they may not be uh, even willing to say it out loud, but you're saying it in your marketing and mm -hmm. they're going, Oh, they get it, you know, um, in a way that they may not even articulate to you in a, in right. a conversation. They might, but it, you know, it depends on kind of what you offer and, and what you're sure, uh, what you're doing. Sure. Well, and yard shaming is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I felt it myself. Don't ask my neighbors what my <laughs> <Me> looks like. <laughs> Okay, that that that's great. I I appreciate that because I I think um, that might be part of where uh, some marketing messages are are like not hitting the mark because they're not getting to sure you know but both things. So let's talk about websites for a minute. Um, can you offer some examples of um, how to make sure? the brand message is clear on the website. You said something earlier about, you know, if, if people can look at your header for, you know, a couple of seconds and, and can't figure out what you do, then you're not messaging well, but, you know, maybe some actual examples of what that would look like might help people. Yeah, sure. That. So, yeah. So, so that's a great question. Um, and I love it because I am very just practical at, at core and go, how do I implement these, these yeah. things is, um, so for the listener who's going, you know, what, but what does this actually look like, um, played out? Um, so the previous example about the header of a website, um, is certainly the best place to start. So the three things that the header of your website should communicate are what you offer, how it makes your customer's life better and how do they get it? And the, how do they get it is really your call to action. Like what's the one next thing they need to do to move forward in doing business with you. And you want to have that um, functionally on a website. You want to have it styled as a button. You, you want to have it in the top right of your, of the um, kind of header navigation. Um, and you can have it again in that header section um, before you start scrolling. And so that, that call to action is really, really important to have repeated all throughout both your homepage as you scroll down and um, throughout your site. So you want to condition your customers to go when they're ready to move forward in doing business with you. There is no question in their mind what they need to do. So if you sell products online, it's probably going to be by now. If you're a service-based business and there's some sort of consultation or conversation that you need to have with your clients before moving forward with working with, with you, it could be something like, schedule a call or request a call or schedule a consult or something along those lines. Um, so just in the header of your website, if you make sure it has those three things, um, it will put you, you know, it, it will move you forward and making sure that you're being really clear with your customers. Other things that to incorporate are things like that your plan, like how to do business with you, which I mentioned earlier, have a section on your homepage that's, you know, three steps to get a great looking lawn, you know, to keep, keep our thread of that example going in this conversation. But, you know, step one, call for a free, free quote. Step two, um, choose your service options. Step three, uh, have the best looking yard on the block without all the work. Something along those lines to have the really clear one, two, three steps of how to work together. That goes a, a really long way. But then the other things you want to incorporate are things like have a section that describes the problem that you understand that your customer's up against. Um, you know, what, what's the pain they're experiencing right now that they don't have to experience if they buy your product or service, include that in there, include things like, um, 
your value proposition? Like what are, what are three things that, that are going to make their life better if they choose to work with you or purchase your product? So those are a few examples um, of, in thinking about just kind of like bands or sections on a scrolling homepage of a website, if you include those things, it's going to be one clearer how you're going to help your customer's life you know, how you're going to make their life better um, if they choose to work with you. And it's clear how to, how to do business with you. And I think those are the two pieces that often get missed um, from a clarity standpoint when it comes to websites in particular. Boy, I think so too. And I'm really glad that, that you um, talk about that because I, I think it is really overlooked and ends up being so frustrating for people when they go to websites and they cannot figure out what to do next. Yeah. And, and I don't think um, small business owners realize that, that that is a big thing for people that they want to know, okay, what's my next step? Yeah. What do I need to do here? Yeah. And making them look for it or not even be able to find it is probably going to make them move on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the reality is, is so we, we purchase things after we've read the words that um, have made us want to purchase those things. Right. And so if we don't have that in our, in our websites, as we're talking about now, or any of our marketing material, um, our, our customers are going to just move on to somebody else who's more clear. They may have an inferior product or service, but if uh, they're clearer than we are in their messaging, they're going to get the business. And so clarity wins every day of the week, even over quality of product or service, unfortunately, but it's, it's the way it works. So yeah. it's important. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a really good point because you just, you have to own it that, that this is what matters. Um, and I really like that you used an example of, of lawn care because I can also imagine that some people might be listening and thinking, okay, well, I, I'm sure this makes sense for you know, certain kinds of businesses, but not necessarily for mine. So Aaron, um, would you speak to the kinds of businesses that this will work for? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in great question, Diane, because inevitably everybody's asking the question, will this work for me? Right. Yeah. Um, that is the question we always ask. And the answer is it works for every kind of business. It doesn't matter your industry. It doesn't matter your business model. It doesn't matter your business size. Um, using and incorporating a narrative story framework into your marketing message is worked for huge brands like the Chick-fil-A's of the world, as well as small mom and pops. It works for everybody because all of our customers are human, presumably, and all of our human brains are wired to respond to story. So really, it does work for everybody. Excellent. Thank you for that. I thought so. But, you know, th- there are people. Sure. Um, so um, what was I going to ask you? Are, are there, you, you, and you may have you know, touched on this, but I'm wondering if there are like specific things that people should like check off to make sure they're including in their brand message. Yeah, sure. So um, a few of these I mentioned before, but um, you know, are you clearly defining the thing that your customer wants? Like, what is it uh, that they want? And, and, and this is really what you offer. And so, um, it can be tempting sometimes, especially brands that, you know, they solve a lot of problems. Yeah. They can solve a lot of problems is to, you know, list all 47 problems that your, your, your product or service can solve for when really you need to pare it down um, to have like, this is, this is the thing that we offer. We're clear about what we offer and who we offer it to. Um, and this is the problem that we're solving in that and, and be really clear and, pare it down. Like the, this is the one problem that we are setting out to solve. And it can be high level that incorporates all the 47 problems that you solve underneath that. But uh, you have to lead with clarity and simplicity in terms of the, the one problem you're going after to solve. So what does your customer want? What's the problem you're helping them solve in that, um, both externally and internally, like we talked about, even just the, how you're talking about, um, your own like 
empathy of, of positioning as a brand, being empathetic to the problem that they're up against to get that thing that they want um, in, in your messaging and saying like, Hey, I get it. I get, uh, I get how, um, you know, how hard it is to get to, to taking care of your lawn when you have all these other responsibilities on your plate, um, showing empathy, but then also, uh, positioning as authority. Like you have competency to help them solve their problem. Um, and you can incorporate things like testimonials to, to help with, uh, positioning your, uh, yourself as an authority in, in what you offer. And then of course, incorporating that plan, like I, like I mentioned before, the plan to do business together, incorporating um, a really clear calls to action of what you want somebody to do next. People will go where you tell them to go. Like they're going to do the thing that you tell them to do. And too often in our brand messaging and our marketing messaging, we are not clear about the one next thing we want them to do um, in those calls to action. So tell them, you know, if you want them to call, tell them to call. If you want them to email, tell them to email. If you want them to buy now, tell them to buy now. Um, but be really clear with that. And then also just show showcasing both in pictures and in words like, hey, this is what success looks like if we work together. Um, this is what success looks like if you purchase my, my product, um, or engage with our, with our service. And, um, and also, uh, being clear about the, what's the failure you're helping them avoid, you know, in, uh, if they choose to work with you, you're, there's, there's some, something at stake if they don't move forward. And so you want to communicate what that is, uh, as well, that they'll keep, keep experiencing the pain or the problem or, or whatever it is that, that you are helping them solve for if they don't choose to, to move forward and do business with you. Um, so high level, like those are the pieces you want to incorporate into your brand message. And um, there, there are certainly kind of methods and ways, ways to do that uh, really well. And uh, pointing to the story brand framework again is a fantastic framework to, to follow to do that would be the place that I would recommend people start. I think that's great. And I love that you said um, about paring it down and getting, you know, simple yeah. because I, I totally agree with you. People think I have to say everything. I have to tell people everything because if I don't, then I might miss out on an opportunity. Right. And unfortunately, then people can't land because there's just too much information. That's right. That's right. Every piece of our marketing material, whether it's a headline, whether it's an email subject line, whether it's, you know, a single ad on social, every piece should be designed to move your customer forward to do one next thing. Not all the things that need to happen to do business with you, but it should be designed to move them one step closer, whatever that next step is. Um, and exactly what you said, it can be so tempting to try to pack all the things into one ad or to in one email or into, you know, one section of your website and it just overwhelms people. And when they get overwhelmed, um, they're, they're out They're you know, they're not going to continue to engage. Exactly. Right. It's, it's exactly, it's like, it's like adopting a philosophy that one thing can lead to more things, but more things isn't going to lead to anything. Correct. Absolutely. And we're, we're relational people, right? It's like meeting somebody and like the, in your first meeting, trying to dump the entire history of your life on them in one sitting. And they're like, wow, this person is <laughs> uh, TMI. You know, we have to think like our customers are people yeah. too, and think of it in, uh, relationally, you know, how do you nurture and grow relationships? It's incrementally, it's not all at once. Right. Right. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I really appreciate this conversation, this information. I, th I think it is so important. And so will you tell the listeners, you know, how they can find you, um, how, you know, you can help them learn more about the story brand guide, because I feel like that really is probably their, their best bet. Um, and anything else you've got going on that you uh, would like them to know about, please? 
Yeah, sure. So um, I actually will put together several resources for your audience. If they go to theacornteam.com forward slash accelerate, I'll have several resources there, um, like a a website checklist, um, how to create, uh, how to create what's called a one liner, which is how to answer the question, what do I do in a, or what do you do rather in a succinct way? Um, so I'll, I'll put some of those resources there for your audience, um, on my site. And, um, again, my site is the T H E acorn team, A C O R N T E A M.com. And they could find me there. And yeah, so I, um, I help companies all the time or work with mostly small service-based businesses, helping them, really craft their brand message, develop that brand message, help them uh, figure out what are the words that they need to be using in all their marketing messages and how to use them. Um, and so I work uh, individually with companies um, as well as I have some some group coaching opportunities as well. And so the best way to reach me is really through my website um, or uh, Aaron Fultz on LinkedIn. Great. That That is terrific. It's so funny too, Erin, because when you talk about, you know, how to be able to answer the question, what do you do? Boy, that is just the worst, you know? It is. (laughs) Yeah. Have you ever been at a networking event where you have everybody go around the room and answer that question and halfway around, you're like, I have no idea what these people do. Yes. All the time. Uh, So, yeah, that that will solve for that problem. Uh, Okay. (laughs) That is terrific. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much again. And listeners, thank you. You know, this is definitely something that is really important. And especially I would say um, in this, you know, COVID heading into post COVID world where everything right now is online, man, your, your website really needs to be working for you. So take this to heart. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, uh, Go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, pick up a free trial of audible.com and do some exploration and discovery. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name and price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl and a foul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Hey friends, this is Jim Knight, former 21-year Hard Rock executive turned best-selling author and top 10 keynote speaker. And I'm Brant Menzwar, former frontman of Hollywood's most dangerous band turned top 10 motivational speaker and best-selling author. We host the how-to podcast, Thoughts That Rock, where we talk to rock stars, athletes, CEOs, astronauts, and even next door neighbors who share their expertise and opinions. Together, we tackle the most interesting and challenging topics of today. Whether you want to learn how to become more confident, how to deal with anxiety at work, or how to write a hit song, or use Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in life, we've got hundreds of episodes to help amp up your life and move you forward. Subscribe to Thoughts That Rock wherever you listen to podcasts and check out evergreenpodcast.com for more information.